right, so we're in a woo, we're in an interesting spot here. You're either going to be the last one of season two or the second one of season three. We'll make it the last one so he starts the first one. Well, I can switch them around, yeah, that won't be a problem. <laughs> Maybe the last one of season two, make Justin the first one of season yeah, three. Perfect. All right, Woo. perfect, let's do it. <laughs> that means I gotta get it edited tonight <laughs> to make it happen. Um, I've known you for probably two years now? Yeah, we are around there. So, I know who you are. I'll start this off with, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Brandon Kilgore and own operate Premier Polishing Detailing out of Osseo, Wisconsin. So you're in Osseo right now, but that's yeah. not where you started. No, nope. so originally I started over at VMAX Transportation, VMAX Trucks, Truck Sales and Service out yep. of Zealand, Michigan. Um, I'm originally from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Really? Yep. I thought you were from here in Wisconsin, that's why you came back here. Nope. I, I'm from Grand Rapids. My dad moved to a little town of Nielsville, which is over kind of central Wisconsin, kind of Marshfield is. Yeah, so Marshfield is. Yep. So he moved here in like 08 and 2012-ish. I came over. Really? Yep. And then my mom actually got hit on her Harley in like 17-ish and was pretty messed up. So I moved back there to kind of help out around there and I needed a job. So my buddy Chase at BMAX, he's like, oh, I can get you a job here. And I was like, whatever, you know. I need some quick, so <laughs> started there doing that, and there's no shortage of work over there. At no, Max. not at all. I mean, good if, people. If they don't have customer trucks, they got seventy trucks of their own to do. Yeah, they got their own trucks too. Yeah. yeah. So that's where I started at, and then I moved back here, and I don't know, just the instant gratification, and like you said, being around cool stuff that just sticks with. And you me. got spoiled right off the gate. Yeah, like, Max has got some big <laughs> yeah, guys. They, yeah. Yeah, they got a couple show trucks, and I mean, they all got 389 gliders, so I mean, yeah. it's a lot of nice trucks over there, so yep. you got to see, like, some of the cream of the crop over yep. there. Yep, yep, and I mean, they got a good customer base, too, so yeah. I've seen a lot of sweet stuff come through the shop. They're, they're really good people, so they, they got a lot of good people around them, mm -hmm. and a good following through, not just the show circuit, but the work that they do, and the people that they've surrounded themselves with over the years, so... They've got a lot of really good people in their corner and in their backs, and yep. you know, it's pretty cool that you got to start off with that because not mm -hmm. everybody gets to start off with that. Yeah, yeah, I learned it, learned a lot right off the back. So I kind of got, I mean, I was spoiled, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then you you moved here and you kind of traveled around the state for a little bit, right? Because yep, I did. When I first met you, you weren't just in Osseo. You no, were, yeah, I was doing it traveling. So it's summer of. So summer of 20 was my first year full time doing it, and I was all over the state. There was sometimes you were over here, and they're like, some of my locals were like, "Oh my god, you see that new kid, Brandon? He's over here polishing your area." I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> like, yeah. he's a good kid. He comes in, buys product from me, talks nice. He's got respect. Like, I don't care. There's an empty lot across the street. Come by and polish over there. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was fun. I mean, right out of high school, I was building bridges and unions. So I was always on the road. And I got out of that because I was sick of being on the road, staying in hotels. And when I started this, obviously, right when COVID was, so I knew it was going to be on the road, staying in hotels. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the same thing. I was like, first chance I get, you know, when I'm set up right, I'm going to get a shop. And last winter, spring was that chance. And I jumped it. And here we are. So I've really been looking forward to having this conversation with you because I knew that this would be where the conversation ended at some point in time. So I'm glad we hit it early. But so every new polisher wants to get into a shop like right away. Everybody thinks that that's where you make all your money at. I try to stress to everybody, don't get a shop until your business can support it, mm -hmm. right? So I want to know from your side, this is your first year in your shop, right? Yep. Have you seen your profits go through the roof because you're in the shop versus when you're on the road? Nope. Thank God. I, <laughs> I've been trying to explain so this to everybody. Actually, actually, what I tell everybody is like, last year was my first full year of doing it. 
And it's like last year, even though I was on the road, hotels, fuel, wear and tear, everything, I felt like I had way more money last year than I felt this year. And I got, I mean, QuickBooks, it don't lie. I mean, I've made way more money this year, but it's like, I feel like I don't have any. <laughs> it's just like, where does it go? And then you start looking at the bills and the shop and overhead and... So let me ask you, what do you, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but what do you, what do you pay per month for your shop rent? 1500 Okay, so $1,500. Let me just break this down for you. What's your average truck? I know it's a terrible bucks. question. I'm going to complain about just, this. Yep, I, yeah, yep. But, but no, I just, yeah, 700 bucks. So $700. What's your profit off of that $700? Yeah, we've already been through that conversation. Yeah. So every <laughs> time you break it down like you do. Every time you pay your employees and all your materials and all that stuff, you haven't figured that out yet, but I'm glad we've, we've started that conversation so that now I can help you move forward mm -hmm. in your own business. But let's just say out of that $700, your profit after paying insurances and taxes and all the other bullshit that you're going to have to pay on that $700, let's just say the leftover money is $300. Yep. You now have to polish five trucks just to pay, just your, to shop. pay your shop rent. Yep. And it's like right now when you don't have a shop, you look at it like those five trucks, that money's going in your bank and you're like, holy oh, shit, I'm doing good. I'm making money, I'm making money, I'm making money. But when you think about that, like if you're only doing five trucks a week, that's a whole week of no wages just to have a shop. Yep. And not everybody pays attention to that and thinks about that. And the only reason we got to talk about that was because you just did a headache rack for a guy and you've got seven hours in it. And you were like, what should I charge? And I'm like, what do you have in it for materials? And I knew what your answer was going to be. Your answer was going to be, I don't know. And I'm like, all right, well, Some, what do you have in it? And you're like, well, I'm pretty sure I only have like 15 sheets of sandpaper. I'm like, and seven hours of labor and your buffs and your compound and mineral spirits or lacquer thinner or whatever else yeah. you've used on it. Some jobs I just, I try not to think about what I have into it because it just, you it's know, depressing sometimes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you like, know how hard you yeah, work. Yeah. And you know how little the number is when you sit back and calculate it. I'll tell you the biggest mistake I ever did in my entire life, and this is the only reason why I hammer new polishers on it, is because for two years, I tracked my hours versus what I paid myself. <laughs> and at the end of two years, this was not... Overtime, nothing. This was just straight pay for my hours. There was weeks where I put in 120 hours in a week. That's 20 hours a day, six days a week, right? Calculated up by seven, it's only like 15 hours by seven days a week, right? So if I calculated out on what I made for hourly wage for those two years, it was $12 an hour. And then I hadn't paid Social Security unemployment and all that other <laughs> stuff like that was right before I went legit so I was like $12 an hour like I could go work at a factory somewhere for $15 an hour yeah. nowadays you can go to McDonald's like 20 yeah <laughs> and I, I went to had to work 120 hours a yeah. week I could have worked 60 and spent the rest of my family yeah, but then I was tied like, to them as a business it's like you know 100 grand as a business owner ain't 100 grand versus, you know, as an employee, 100 grand is 100 grand. 100 grand is your money you took home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but I think the reason why you notice now that there isn't that much money in your account having a shop is when you have a shop, you're like, you know, I could really use a desk or I could really use an extra jig to hold wheels mm -hmm. or I could use some extra grinders. Did you need them? No, not really. It's not making you any more money. But when you needed them, when one broke down, it saved you a trip to the store or when you needed to invoice somebody, it gave you a place to sit. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're constantly investing in your business, right? So much like the headache rack, what's my, what's my number? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. what is it that you need to make to justify your seven hours worth of time plus your materials and all that stuff? Is that number now not only realistic to you? But is that number realistic to the customer? You know, all right, now I'm in a conundrum, a brand new headache rack. And I've always judged this on my pricing for wheels is a brand new wheel costs $220. I can't charge somebody $150 to refinish one, like a really nasty white one 
to make it perfectly shiny again is going to take me $150 worth of my time and labor. Is it worth that? I see polishers do it all the time. They charge a customer $150 to repolish a wheel. And it's like, I can't do that because I know I can call up my local tire shop, yeah. buy a brand new wheel that I'm not going to shave half the material off of, and give them a brand new wheel for 220 when they're going to pay me 150 to resurface an old one that now the likelihood of it cracking is way higher after I've sanded it deep. I can't justify that in my head to my customers. I'm not saying the customers wouldn't pay it. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying I can't justify it in good conscience on my end. So I hope more people understand that. But if if you had to go back, would you have waited a few more years before you got a shop or are you happy you had the shop? I'm happy with it. I I enjoy being home in my own bed. Like I said, right out of high school, I was doing that union shit, started building bridges and then I went to, back to Michigan and then came back here and then I ended up going back again one more time and then I was doing union again. I was a dozer operator and I was living over by Detroit with a buddy and I mean, I had a home, but you know, it ain't home living with a buddy. Yeah. And then I came back here and it's just, it's just nice to be home. Yeah. So you've worked your lifestyle around being able to eat those five trucks every month. Mm-hmm. And it's not difficult. Like if it's something you really truly want, you're gonna make it work. Yeah. I mean, and I, I mean, I don't have a problem doing it. I mean, it's the winter months right now. You know, it's uh, any polisher. Winter in tough. Wisconsin. You yeah. gotta have a. You gotta have a shop. <laughs> yeah, and, but I mean, it's it's tough for all every polisher in the winter time. I mean, nobody wants to get their stuff shined up, so yeah. you kind of struggle. But it's like my books right now from March all the way to the end of May are book solid. Yeah. I mean, so. I got everybody and their brother calling my my brand new 2022 schedule is sitting yeah, right same over there at my desk. Bucks, yep. and, and everybody is asking, can I get my weekend that I always get? Can I get my days that I always get? Hey, I bought four more new trucks this year. Mm -hmm. Plan on being here an extra day next year. Like, whew, Yeah, man. it's like I got guys, they're like, they all mention it. And I'm like, better get on the books now. I was like, I mean, I got, I got a good guy now that, you know, I can get more done, but it's like, I, I'm still really into it and it's like I'm not gonna say well I gotta you know wait to see it's you know first come first serve yeah and you know I know a lot of polishers that just keep a list of guys and they're like they call one to do this weekend and one to do next weekend by the time they get down their list those guys are already polished by somebody else I've always found that a schedule works so much better mm -hmm. sometimes you lose one on one like you think the truck's only gonna take a day and it ends up taking you two days yeah. and it's like all right now I gotta bust my tail even harder to make sure I can still get this done in a day and a half so I can get the other truck done the next day. Mm -hmm. Honestly, keep a schedule though. Especially if you're a full-timer, you should have a schedule. Yeah. You yeah. should know about what you're gonna do. If you need to give yourself some leeway, only work every other day. Mm -hmm. And give yourself that day freedom in between. But um, I think it's pretty cool that you've, you've learned early on. You've only been doing this how long? Uh, polishing, I've been just going into my fifth year but full time with it, this going into my full time on your own. You started, in yeah. 20. Uh, yep, starting twenty. So this year coming year will be your. So well, you'll be two years in. Two and a half, yeah. In March. Mm, April. April, yeah. April. I was gonna say because I remember it was close to Louisville. Yep. When I when you first said you were going full time, so right around March or April. Huh, that's pretty cool. You've grown a lot. Yeah, it's this this year is. It's been big for me. I and you've gotten hooked up with some big guys right yeah, off the gate. I mean, you got pretty lucky. I shouldn't say lucky. You worked your tail off to get to that spot. Yeah. And, I mean, Adam Johnson at Candy. I mean, like, he's I can't thank that guy enough. I mean, he builds some cool stuff. Yeah, he builds some cool stuff, and he's he's helped me a ton. Yeah. I mean, he's kept me busy. He kept me busy, and he <laughs> bumped my name hard for me. So, it really That's awesome. Out. That so. helps out a lot. So, what's the primary thing you work on right now it's just trucks and trailers right yep just trucks and trailers and you do a lot of the crazy stuff already you, you do a lot of the stuff i see everybody starting up doing the grain hoppers the tubs yeah we <laughs> i i had one guy message me and he's like i bought a brand new mac trailer it'll be here he's like what can you do it i'm like well we can do it this date and literally got delivered to him and like the week later he dropped off my shop and I called Justin up. I'm like, hey, I need help. Like, I mean, it's full rails, and he's got 
from factory, he had the fenders welded on there. So, I mean, it was nothing but sanding. Yeah. I was like, there's just too much for one guy. So, I brought Justin in, helped me there. And then two weeks after that, I had a 45 foot horse trailer come in, and that was top, bottom rails, the side panels. And then, like, two or three weeks after that, I had that hopper come in, and it was rails, wheels, front, <laughs> back. Hoppers. I mean, it was the whole nine yards, and yeah, this it was interesting fall. I mean, it wasn't very busy, but it was busy with those. It was busy with the yeah. big jobs. Yeah. yeah. What's what's um, how long does it take you to do like the the green hopper with the rails and tubs and everything? How long did that take you? We had how many days? I think we had seven full days on it. Seven full days. Yeah. And eight hour days, ten hour days. Uh, there were, well, it was 80, what was it, like 83 total hour, man hours into it. Really? Yeah. Per person? No, combined. Oh, combined. Yeah. Well, that's not so bad. No. What, I mean, what sucked is it. It's a lot of prep. Yeah, it's a, it's a, fi it was a 15 and he doesn't run it. I mean, it, he, it seemed very little winter, but it seemed some enough to affect it. So we had to sand everything. And I mean, we went through probably 400 sheets of sandpaper. <laughs> And I was like, I ordered, I ordered some, I texted Ellen, I was like, you know, I need sandpaper. And I got some sandpaper and then we got halfway through it and I was like, I better get some more. <laughs> so I told her and I was like, I need some overnight, I need it now. But I mean, I've gotten so much feedback and compliments off that trailer, just off of oh, yeah. social media. It's just... And you've gotten, you've grown quite a bit on TikTok. I mean, TikTok's really taken off. Yeah, right? I've had a few videos that just... I mean, it's just so such simple videos. Like, I think one of my big ones was like an end cap. I sanded it down, polished it out, and I mean, people just like lose their minds over it. Yeah. Like, well, end caps are one thing that a lot of people struggle with. So, yeah, watching somebody do one is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, they they were tough for me for a long time, and I mean, even today, I mean, I still learn more. Yeah. So and honestly, I don't know if I, I don't know if I. Um, I don't know if I taught you a lot today. I feel like we fine tuned you a little bit. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're a very talented polisher. For only being two years in, I'm excited to see where you are in five years from now. Because you've gotten to start at this level, right? Mm -hmm. And you're you're just starting there at a high level already, and it's only going to be up from there. Like a lot of things you're going to notice are going to be just fine tuning. My first 18 years, every time I learned something new, it was like huge steps. Well, now for the last three years, everything to me is still huge. But in the grand scheme of everything I've learned, it's just little bits, like mm -hmm. just short little pieces every time. Yeah. I, every time I learn something new, it's like, all right, it's better than what I did before. But now can I justify the time giving that to a customer? Nine times out of ten, it isn't. Once in a great while, you get somebody like Don Wood or Mitchell Bottomley or the Hammets or um, I'm trying to think of some of the other big guys that don't mind spending for top. Randy Manning at the time, mm -hmm. too. Um, you get some of the guys that'll, you know, spend some extra coin because they want perfection. Yep. You know, um, the little things like that are eventually what will set you apart and you'll, you'll catch on to them, but honestly teaching you the stainless today and the end cap, that little bit fine tuning. It'd be interesting to see where you take it home and how you fine tune it even more mm -hmm. when you get home. Because you're starting off at a, at a high level. I, I would put you ahead of a lot of the polishers that I know that have been doing it for 10 or 15, even some of them that have been doing it for 20 years. I would say you're better than some of those guys already. So be interesting. That. It'd be interesting to see where you take it. Because I don't see much bad, and even then, some of the little stuff, it's like you're still growing and learning. It's mm -hmm. a lot of things you didn't understand or didn't know at the time. And I don't think I've ever seen anything bad come out of your place. No, like, it's one thing with like Justin, it's like, I I spend a lot of time, like, I like to tear stuff apart. It's just like me personally, like, I like, I try to treat the customer's truck like if it was my own. Like, if I'm spending that amount of money, like, I want, I expect that out of it. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, like, take wheels off, take steps off. Like, I do all that stuff. But you charge for it. Yeah. I mean, you know, some guys don't like it, but it's, like, you know, it, it's my service, you know. Yeah. That's what I'm, that's what I want my name 
built on. Yeah. And like I said, as you start to fine tune that, eventually you'll you'll find certain things that you'll not necessarily cut corners on, mm -hmm. but you'll find some things that you won't do 110%, you'll just do them 100%. Yep. And eventually you'll find your own rhythm and you'll find your own groove where you start making money better on a regular basis that your business starts growing, doubling each year, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But um, you'll notice a huge difference. I would say within the next two or three years, depending on how the economy goes and how this market goes, I think you'll see your business double in the next two to three years just off of the effort you're putting in and what you're taking back out of it. I, th I think you're gonna kill it. I do. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited for this year. I mean, I've, like I told you earlier, I went through three guys this year. Everybody says polishing's easy. <laughs> It is. It is till you hold on to a six six thousand or six thousand RPM animal. And yeah, you know, that wants to kill you all day yeah, long. I had I brought one buddy. I mean, he hauls cattle, and he had off for day. And I was actually doing the uh, the beam on Adam's uh, show trailer, and I brought him with me. And he shows up in basketball shorts and cut off. And I'm like, oh god. <laughs> so we start going, and you know, I'm cutting down there, and I hear. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, sounds like somebody's getting beat up down there. I looked down there, he had caught the beam underneath, and the fucking thing bounced off his face mask, hit the beam again, bounced off, ran up his arm, and it dug in right here. Ooh. They say he had caught. He was like, "I'm done." <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> but I don't know. Now, like I said, me and Justin connected, worked stuff out, and I mean, we've been a pretty good team so far. It's cool that you two linked up with each other, because. Um like I said, I had let, one of the last times I had talked to Justin, he was he was saying he was thinking about quitting because it just it wasn't working out. Everything he was trying just wasn't working. It wasn't working. It wasn't working. And uh, I really think he's a great polisher. He is. I think even better is what makes a great polisher better is when there's another great polisher with him. Mm -hmm. You know, when you when you two can play off each other, and now as the two of you grow. You're both going to learn things together, and you're going to catch things that each other are doing that eventually helps elevate you. And on top of that, now that you have two good cutters, if you can hire in a chaser or two chasers to just follow behind you guys, mm -hmm. that's when you're going to see your business go from here to there. Like That doubles you really quick when you have two guys that can cut and get stuff done and are motivated to get things done and get it done right. And then you can take a chaser and just have them follow behind you and know what they need to get done so that you don't have to slow yourself down and mess up your rhythm. And that's what we talked about too. I mean, we talk about it probably at least once a week. It's like being one person and you know, that summer heat drains you, you know, mm -hmm. you get overloaded with work and it just, it wears you out. And then, you know, so now you get a guy who can keep up with you and pump out the same quality of work, you know, yeah. and you guys just feed off each other. And it just, I try to explain this to Steve all the time too, that, you know, Yes, TikTok can be a great resource to help bring in new customers, help get you exposure. Mm -hmm. But even I noticed when I was doing a lot of the YouTube videos and the Instagram videos, when Instagram and YouTube were big, they're still big, just not what TikTok is. TikTok's a whole other animal. Yeah. But um, if you look at those two things, every time I would stop to put a video together, I would lose 30 minutes of motivation. And for the people that are doing multiple videos a day, like TikTok requires multiple videos a day. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, if you really want to get to the level Steve's at where you've got hundreds of thousands of followers, like yep. you've got to be putting content out all the time. You've got to be doing live videos. A live video takes half hour, an hour of your time. Mm -hmm. Like you've got to be putting out a ton, a ton of content. Well, every time you stop, it holds you back for that half hour. It's like if you're by yourself, I could see how you could easily get lost and like, lose your motivation and forget where you were at. It's much like in my shop. I tell guy, I tell Keenan all the time, like the reason why, like the guy that does wheels does boxes and the guy that does tanks does grills is because you get in a rhythm. Mm -hmm. If you do the same thing over and over and over again, eventually you get faster at it. Whereas uh, like Zach in Nebraska, my Nebraska location, they'll each go down one side. So you'll do two wheels, a tank, a box, and the other wheel. Yep. It's like, if you break up what you're doing, wheels and then tanks and then boxes and then wheel and then grill, like your mindset changes because you're going from one set to another set to another set. It's different processes for everything. 
hard to stay streamlined, high speed motivated when your brain has to just change. You put 100 wheels in front of me, by the time I get to the 100th wheel, I'm going to be a third of the time I was at the beginning. Yeah. Because eventually your body gets muscle memory and you get that rhythm. The guy doing wheels should easily be able to do boxes. The guy that does tanks should easily be able to do the grill. Should be quick and efficient. If you go down each side and you half the truck, I, I find doing half and half of the truck takes twice as long for me mm -hmm. as it does if I just do wheels and boxes and the other guy does tanks and grill. Yeah, we've been kind of sp splitting it up like that. I mean, kind of depends on the day. I mean, one day he'll do wheels and something, yeah. and I'll do, you know, just kind of swap. Keenan and I do too once in a while. He likes to go back to the olden days and just, why don't we just half this truck? Like, race down. This truck isn't a show yeah. truck. That, that, that's how I started. I mean, that's how we started at VMAX. I mean, you just straight down sides and yeah. that's how it was. I'll do one side, you do the other. It's like, oh. I remember the wheel races. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. Oh, God. Keenan and I. <laughs> Keenan and I used to do that all the time. Did you guys even cut them wheels? Holy <laughs> shit. I'm like, all right, well, if you're going to beat me, like, all right, now we're going to break it down to, all right, you beat me on time, but now let, let's see where the quality oh, was yes, at. Yeah. Like, if, if you compromise the quality below what I want to put out, plus you beat me on the time, like, it's got to be one or the mm -hmm. other. Like, you, I'll let you beat me on time, but if you beat me on the quality in the amount of time we did it, like, hmm, I know I'm getting old, but I ain't that old <laughs> yet. So it's interesting. We've had a lot of fun. There was times where we were polishing two minute wheels. Like I wasn't letting him beat me and he wasn't, he didn't want to let me beat him either. You know, he wanted <laughs> yeah. to prove that he was new on the scene and going to beat me. You know, he was young and ready to go, but it was fun. We had a lot of good times. All right. I love that question. What's that? I love that question. You have chrome wheels. What can you do? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> to wash them. Yeah. Wipe them down with some chrome polish. The great, Great commentary for you. What do you do with chrome wheels? Nothing. Nothing. Take them to a chrome shop and have yep. them re-chrome. <laughs> Throw them away. <laughs> Throw them away. Buy me one. Just don't buy black. <laughs> oh, don't buy black powder coat. Please don't. Because I ain't fixing that either. No. Nope. Um, so we got, um, what do you work on? What got you into it? What got you into it was Chase offering you a job and you just want to get off the road. Um, so... I usually ask everybody what they started out with for materials, but if you started at um, VMAX, they've always been using stuff we've used. Mm -hmm. um, they were with the company I was with in the past, and I think now they use some of the stuff that we use. They might still use some of the old stuff, um, but you probably started off with the same stuff then. Yep. Yep. I actually, uh, they had you over there like two, week, two, three weeks right before I started. Oh, really? Yeah. That's wild. <laughs> yep. Because that was right when um, one of their main employees quit while I was there. Yep. And um, he had gone to work for another another polishing Walk company that was close yep. close by there. Yeah. It was a local competitor for them. So that was pretty crazy. Yep. So they were kind of, I remember when I was there, they were kind of in a tough spot. Like, man, now they were shorthanded. Mm -hmm. They needed some more help. And that was right when the truck sales was blowing up. Yeah, they, they were, I mean, they... They've always just, I mean, they buy and sell so many trucks, but they're always loaded up with trucks there. To... And they had just started the polishing side. They had bought a wheel machine. Um, they had, um, the camera died. <laughs> of course. This isn't the first time that's happened. You think I'll be better prepared Screen for this. Screen face right neither of us realized Yeah, neither of us realized it was off. <laughs> you get in a good conversation. It's yeah. just how it goes sometimes. So, we'll go back and do this one again, and we'll see if we can make it even better. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we went through the what got you into it that you were you started off over at um, VMAX and uh, you were you were talking about um, that you had just gotten over there two weeks after I had gone through training and that they were in a bad spot mm -hmm. and um, it's it's funny that that all worked out the way it did because two weeks earlier you could have been there through my whole training course yep. it might have been a whole different situation for you because um, when VMAX had first come over here. Um, they had sent two of their employees here to train and I thought I had done a good job with both of them and Dave and Ryan had both called me and were like, something's not right here. Like, how long does it take you to do a truck? And I'm like, dude, we're doing three to five a day. He's like, how is that possible? Like the way we're doing it, like we're washing, we're pulling the truck apart, we're rewashing, polishing and then rewashing again. Like we're sanding everything. I'm like, why are you sanding everything? Like, well, that's what you, you taught them. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> well, that's not what I taught you guys at all. Like, that's not how it went down. And they're like, well, do you care if we come over and, you know, 
check out your operation. Like, yeah, you guys are welcome to come anytime. And they came and watched us and they were like, what, what was that? Like, what did we just watch? And I'm like, this is what we do to every truck that comes in and comes out. And they were like, this isn't what our guys came home with after being trained. I'm like, oh, that's exactly what I trained them to do. So like, I don't know what they told you when they got home, but, and then they had decided to have me come over to their shop and, and do training in the shop with the group of guys. I think I was there for two days, three days, maybe I stayed at Ryan's house when I was there. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a crazy transition because the one guy had quit and, mm-hmm. and moved on to another polishing company local and then yeah I didn't even realize it it was literally only two weeks between the time yeah. you started yeah it was like yeah it was like two maybe three weeks that's crazy so you got to start there and then my question is what's been the highlight of your career and you said the show scene yep and um, getting to be a part of candy over there because mm-hmm. Adam's a Adam's a good dude he's got he's got a very unique building style and yep. the way he does things. Old school. Yeah, I love old school. I'm, you know me, I'm a cab over junkie. Yeah, it's it's cool though, because I mean like, there's not, when you go to shows, like there's not a ton of the old school looks there. Yeah, the antiques, most of the antiques are very original mm-hmm. antiques, very true to form, and he's got his very own spin on yeah. antiques. And everybody, everybody knows the cream truck with you know the matching Harley <laughs> known for the burnout but yeah. <laughs> I mean it's just I mean just standing around you know you could be talking to somebody and you know you hear somebody call and they're like oh that's that's the such and such truck that's a burnout truck and, uh, it's just yeah like, and he's humble as all get out super humble and you know I've, I've noticed that he'll introduce you to anybody yep I mean he wants you to know the same people he knows yep he's yeah he's no he's not shy at all I mean he just goes yeah that's a that's a cool position to be in, especially having not just a customer like that, but a friend like that, mm-hmm. because that'll that'll help keep you motivated. And yeah, I actually uh, propelled him moving forward. I actually went to uh, G Bats with him, Joplin, yep. back in September, and I texted him. I was like, "Hey, you gonna go G Bats?" Because he was still wishy washy about going, and he's like, "Yeah, I think I am." And I was like, "Well, I mean, I'll go." He's like, "You want to?" I was like, "Yeah." So. We threw my pickup on the trailer, and me, him, and his, uh, God, I think, lanes four or five, and we all rolled down the truck, and I mean, he spent 10 hours one way with a guy, you know, of his level. I mean, it's just crazy, like, the amount of stuff that just I learned in just a 10-hour truck ride with him. It's a cool experience. Like, um, I don't know how else to explain it, but, like, Tim Cody did the same thing with me one time. Like, we just hopped in the truck and went. Mm-hmm. We went to uh, Big E's Memorial at Joplin. And uh, even though it was just from Missouri to Joplin, it was a few hours, but him and I had some serious bonding time and just made made a lifelong connection yep. with each other that even though he's not doing a whole lot in the show truck scene right now, he and I still check in on each other. Mm-hmm. And he comes up to my golf outing every year and we just kind of hang out and have fun. And it's good to have those relations. And we had talked about this earlier today that the trucking community and polishing is a different business than any other business mm-hmm. out there. Like truckers treat you like your family. Yep. And at the same time, if you don't say no, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're not going to say it no for you. <laughs> because, you know, you think about it, truckers, truckers work a lot on holidays and weekends and yep. all that stuff. And they expect you to do the same. Yep. And, I don't want to say they forget that you have a family at home, but they lose sight of the idea that you have a family at home because they have a family at home too. And they know that they work through the holidays and, you know, you should be accepting of that as well. But they're less um, understanding when you want to take time off Mm -hmm. because they don't, they don't take much time off either. Yeah. I I try to limit myself now just to late fall, winter time. I mean, like I said before, Duck hunting, that's my thing. So I was gonna say that's, you're you're a hunter. Yeah, that's that's basically what I tell everybody is like I work to hunt. And I mean I've <laughs> since August, I mean I've been all over hell. I mean North Dakota five times, Oklahoma, going to Arkansas in a couple weeks. I mean I go, I chase the birds, that's what I like to do and I'm never gonna I'm not gonna slow down on that because that's my passion. Yeah. So you were just on um two separate hunts, right? Um, no, I do it, it down. The same hunt. Yeah, I went down to Oklahoma, did some duck hunting, and then did some hog hunting. 
Yeah. Yeah, I got a buddy, really good buddy down there, so. That's pretty cool. You know, I've gone hog hunting in Texas. I'm going to put it on this film right now and say there's no hogs in Texas. If anybody says there is, prove me wrong. Take me out, find me a hog. Because I've been out on six hog hunting trips in Texas, and I ain't seen a single hog ever. Yeah, it was it was funny because, like, my buddy I went with, uh, the guy's land that we were going on, he's got those cell cam trail cameras out there. And well, I, listen, everybody shows me cell cam trail cams. There's hogs everywhere in Texas. Baloney. I ain't seen a single <laughs> yeah, one yeah. ever. So we, uh, the guy actually, he owns, a black top, he owns a black top company and a uh, distillery. And we were just walking in the uh, shop and he was like, well, let's try some of this, you know, whiskey out. Not a whiskey guy whatsoever. But uh, as soon as he cracked the bottle, his phone goes off. And he's like, God damn, they're out there. So, you know, we run inside, <laughs> grab the thermal gun and everything. We run out there. And long story short, we finally get out there to him, try to sneak up on him. And my buddy's like, see if you can see him out there in the scope. And there's only been like six to eight of them there. Mm -hmm. I looked through that scope and there's about 30 of them damn things out there. And I was like... Oh man, <laughs> it's kind of uncomfortable when there's that many hogs. I mean, two guys and one rifle. I was like, you know, I'd much rather have a sidearm on me, but don't yeah. have that on me. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's different, but it's fun. I'm gonna go back down in probably three weeks for end of the season duck hunt, and well, that's pretty cool. Wrap it up. I got one more big trip in February. I go down to Missouri for about a month and chase snow geese. Have you always been a duck hunter? No, I I used to be really big into bow hunting and then I was duck hunting a little bit and then I bought a dog and that's when it just, I gave up everything and duck yeah. hunting was just- See, I always going. enjoyed hunting. Just when, when polishing got big, I just ran out of time and it was like, I didn't make time. I, I should have, I enjoy guns, I enjoy shooting. I shot trap for a lot of years. I had a lot of fun. At the end of the day, I don't want it to sound like I'm greedy, but I like money. I like working. I like yeah. having nice things. You can't have nice things if you ain't working hard. Yeah. And that's one thing. One thing was one thing that went to the side. A lot of business guys that I've talked to, you know, younger and older, they all they've all told me just don't overwork yourself. Overwork yourself. Take the vacations. It's yeah. like you know. You never know when it's gonna be your last day. I it's wish I'd have like, known that earlier. I really did. Because <laughs> now I take a vacation with my family and I'm like, God. Like, I think about work a lot when I'm gone. Yeah. So, like, I usually try to find a polisher in the area to go meet up with somebody while I'm there. But, like, I get to thinking about it and I'm like, man, I wish I'd have taken some bigger vacations when I was yeah. when I was earlier on. I mean, who knows? Maybe we wouldn't have been able to afford it either, but I wish we would have. Yeah, my, my hunt trips are usually like a a long weekend type thing. Like I'll leave like a Thursday night, you know, home Sunday. But I mean, I do, I do one or two like week long vacations with the girlfriend a year. She works in the medical field, so it's kind of really- It's hard for her to get time yeah, too. Yeah. That's something she gets mad at now. She's like, you don't always take, you know, vacations when you want. I'm like, it's the joys of working for myself. Yeah. And I can do that. But, oh well. Yeah. She doesn't hunt, so I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Learn to shoot. Yeah. yeah. That's yep. funny. She likes to shoe. She just she doesn't like to kill. Apparently, yeah. Total you know, upset. That was a big thing for me too. Like I was lucky when I was younger, and I hunted with my dad. We had a we had a pheasant dog, uh, Brittany Spaniel, and we used to shoot a lot of pheasant. And my dad, my dad would clean everything. I never had to clean nothing. Not that I get squeamish around that stuff. Just I don't like think, seeing things insides. Mm -hmm. Like I would deer hunt. I never seen a deer. I think I seen one deer in my entire career. It was just. Like we did a lot of drives and I was usually the one walking because I was the young skinny one. Yep. So it was like, I didn't get to see a lot of the deer that were coming up that everybody was shooting and blasting. It was like, it didn't bother me to watch them clean it out. Just, I didn't want to be the guy cleaning it all. So it's actually the cool thing about my girlfriend is she's a, she's a surgical tech. So she's like in surgery. So, so like, she's used to that stuff. Yeah. So like when we first got together, the first hunt season together though, I come home with a pile of birds. <laughs> she's like, let me do it. And I'm like, here, Perfect. have it. And I was like, <laughs> I shoot them, the dog retrieves them, you cut them up, I'm living the life. <laughs> <laughs> and same thing, spring comes around, turkey hunting, I come home and she, I mean, she's just like full out, like just peeling everything apart. I mean, the whole, every bit of the freaking um, feathers and stuff, I mean, like all inside, she's just everything, cut the legs out, I mean, like. That's awesome. I'm like, Jesus, like, we me, to, I'm just like, done. <laughs> we used to get a lot of pheasant. I mean, my dad and I would go hunting, we'd limit out every time we went out. I mean, it was mm -hmm. it was fun. We had a lot of good times. 
and then my dad's dog got into a muskrat hole one time oh and we had to shoot it and the dog lunged at it at the last second oh. and blew her eardrums out and that was it like we put a bell on her she'd run and she'd go on point you couldn't hear her you couldn't find her it was like all right she's on a bird somewhere we just gotta <laughs> find her then you'd find her and she'd kick it up and if it was a hen she'd be mad because you couldn't shoot it right so the hen would go off and she'd chase that hen pissed off at us you know it was like you can't tell her no because she couldn't hear you anymore yeah. so it was like her career came to a pretty pretty end pretty quick after that because as soon as she couldn't hear anymore it was like it was all downhill as soon as you didn't take her out hunting all the time she was just a different dog and she wasn't living the life she was built yeah. to be and that's kind of how my lab is i mean that's what's really cool about him i i tell everybody he has like a his own personality he isn't just like a normal dog like yeah i can take him and put him in a field i mean he'll go straight tunnel vision and i can come home take him out of the kennel put him in the house and i mean he'll just flip a switch and he's like full house you'd never think he's a hunter yeah and my girlfriend loves it can do that my girlfriend loves it because he's a super big baby loves to cuddle and everything yeah. and I mean, I can pull out that camo vest or he knows the difference between like the duck gun and, you know, another gun and <laughs> he just loses his mind. So and I just bought another one. Like, Crazy how smart ago. animals are. Yeah. That's yeah, all you just got a puppy. That dog's a hell of a <laughs> he, He's, I'm excited for him. I mean, he is extremely, I, I think he's smarter than the older one. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's almost too good to be true, but I'm excited for him. Let's say if you can get him to learn from the older one, you're going to have some fun. He's, he has been. Some of the bad habits, too, but <laughs> it's whatever. Oh, yeah, I seen it was, I saw it was a little black lab, and I'm like, well, at least it's black, because when he runs around the shop, he's not going <laughs> yeah, to notice he's as dirty as he is. My girl, she's like, keep him out of the shop. And I'm like, well, i got to take him down there. I mean, he can't go all day without using the bathroom. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, every time I take him out, and Justin will be standing in there doing some moves or something. As soon as you open the door, he just beelines right down to Justin. <laughs> Paul's are just black. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. He likes to use the bump stop method. That's funny. <laughs> That's too perfect. What's been the What's been the most interesting thing you've polished so far? The you done anything? The hopper. The hopper. Yeah. I mean, it, so when I talked to him originally, it was just the rails. Yeah. Then it turned into. He dropped it off one night. I mean, I, I know him. He's from town in there. And so I gave him the code to my shop. And I'm like, you know, just go drop it off in there so it gets warm, whatever. And he's like, all right. And I'm like, just the rails? He's like, everything. I'm like, you know, be more specific on everything. He's like, everything polishable. I'm like, okay. Well, that changes everything. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up rails, front, rear, all four sides of the hoppers. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a project. And you said that thing was in there for seven days? Seven days. Yep. We did, we did, yeah, we did uh, Monday through Saturday and then Monday. Ooh. But 83 man hours. 83 man hours. That's, yep. that's not terrible. I mean, that's some serious work. 83 man hours is no joke. Mm, that's yeah, a lot for one job. Yeah, there was just so much sanding. I mean... You know, obviously, you know, on a new hopper, you could just start cutting. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it I hadn't seen a ton of winter, but it seen some. So, we went through, like, 400 sheets of sandpaper. And, yeah. But it's actually kind of cool because I uh, I shared it in a hopper bottom page on Facebook, like, two, three weeks ago. And the manager of Stoughton Trailers, yep. he messaged me, or he commented on the thing, and he said if you want to polish a new one, message me. So I messaged him and he's like, you know, I'm the manager for it. He's like, we'd be interested in, uh, or would you be interested in, in polishing one for a show trailer for us? And I'm like, absolutely. And he's like, you know, I'm kind of scared to ask what the price is. I'm like, well, the price for what you're going to, you know, for yours would be a lot cheaper because we don't have to do any sand yeah. It's basically just start cutting. Yeah. So he's like, well, I'll talk to, you know, keep the guys and get back to you. So that'd be cool. That'd That's be pretty cool. Yeah. That'd be... I don't know. When I started doing stuff like that, it was life changing. Like mm -hmm. once people like that started to notice and big corporations started to notice, yeah. for whatever reason, like those salesmen talk to everybody that comes and buys a trailer. And you think word of mouth is good? Wait until you get a couple of those guys yeah. talking about you in their back pocket because 
they talk to a hundred times more people than your local driver yeah. does. And I'm not saying they're not as important. I'm just saying it, it's a different, it's a different kind of like you got noticed. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for this year. I mean, I get a lot of people that when they call, they're like, you know, Ad, they're like Adam Johnson. He's one of the like, main ones. It's always him. And then there's a couple like, uh, there's Peterbilt and Eau Claire and Nuss and River States. And, I mean, it's kind of cool. And, you know, those places are shooting mm -hmm. some stuff. Do you keep track of um, who refers people to you? Um, or just Kind of like a mental note. Yeah. yeah. I do the same thing. It's usually the same few, so. Yeah. I usually try to take good care of everybody, mm -hmm. but I, I take better care of the guys that I know that are pushing me and promoting me hard. Yeah, that's just like, I don't... I'll do the extra shit for them. I don't like to travel too much anymore. Made, obviously made that clear, but there's there's a few guys that have, you know, a decent amount of trucks that were with me right off the start. You know, I was like, you know, you guys helped me in the start, so, I mean, I'll still hold my end up and I'll still come to you guys and make things right for you. Craig Zeller, still one of my longest standing customers. I knew him when he just had six trucks. He knew me when I was still driving around in my Bonneville. Mm -hmm. Like, he and I still, him and I went out to dinner last year and just, him and I just went to breakfast and chatted and got caught up with each other to see, you know, know how's his life doing how's my life doing how's business for him doing how's business for me doing like I still enjoy doing that stuff because honestly he helped me through some tough times he helped me through some shitty times in my life not just polishing but some mm -hmm. shitty times in my life and um, it's pretty interesting to see where his career has gone I mean he was just six trucks when I started and we were talking about a cool cabinet that he put in one of his one of his freight liners you know like they built a hardwood cabinet and they thought that was the greatest thing since sliced bread, and it was at the time. Now we look at it like he's got a whole fleet of arrows and just doing cool stuff. I mean, he's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and he's got a whole fleet of trucks, trailers, whole office full of staff. Like, when I first met him, I'm pretty sure it was just him and his wife. And it's cool to see where he's gotten, and he thinks it's cool to see where I've gotten it. You know, we've got our own product line, and yep. we have our own shop, and a lot of people are coming to us. He still ships me rims on pallets. I mean, he just rotates his stock of rims out. It's really cool to maintain long relationships like that. I, I think I've been with him for, I want to say 15 years. We've been doing work for Zeller. And you're going to build a lot of those same relationships. You're going to have, you and Adam Johnson are going to be together for a long time. He's not going to stop building anytime soon. No. And you guys keep a great relationship between the two of you. You're going to you're gonna have him for a long time because he's not going anywhere. I can, I can tell you he's going to keep building trucks until until he can't. Yeah, he's he's got a shop going up right now. And I mean it's he's he's excited about it and I'm excited for him. You know. I mean it's gonna be sweet. Be cool to see what he does with that too. Yep. But what's the um, what's the biggest thing you've done that you got burnt on? Like uh, something you thought that was gonna be easy but turned out to be just super, super difficult. The grill guards. <laughs> <laughs> the front bumpers. Yep. They just never they never make enough money no, on them. Never. Everybody keeps asking me to make YouTube videos on them. And I'm like, I, do, I don't do a whole lot of them. But when I do, like, I try not to let people know I do them because I don't want too many people knowing I do them. <laughs> you know, I, I've developed a really good system that isn't super hard. And I need to shoot a video to do for people at some point in time because I know it will help a lot of people. But... It's not a. It's not going to be a cool video to watch. No. Like, that's like you. You sent you know a picture what was like two Saturdays ago that you had one, yeah. and then what three days later we get one that came in the shop and I was like, thank God that's karma right there making fun of them. <laughs> but we got lucky. Ours was only like four months old and put the, both of us on there. And I mean, it was just like done. The one I did was only like the fifth one we've done all year. I yeah. mean, all year in Nebraska. My boys out there, they do one every week or two every week. Like, it's all cattle guards out there. And this was only the fifth one I've done all year. So I was like, I'm happy with that. Like, I don't, yeah, there I don't, was, there was, I don't was a solid stretch in the springtime. It was, I mean, I was doing one a week, if not every other. I, really? Yeah. And I mean, most of the time I was by myself. They just sucks. Your side of the state's got a lot of them things. I know yeah. there's a lot of deer That's all deer over there. Deer city over there. There's a lot of deer, too, but like, nobody likes to run them. Everybody just 
rather buy a new bumper yeah. than a new hood. Yeah. I know you call it the rich side of the state. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you rich people over here can afford all those new hoods and bumpers. <laughs> They just make the one investment over there. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, man. I, I hate doing them because most of the time they're really beat up. Nobody takes care of them. Nobody's wiping them down. No. Everybody wipes their wheels down, but nobody wants to wipe them bumpers down. No. And they're all, I mean, they take literally everything and yeah. they just get so blasted. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like if you don't hit them with at least a 400 i mean you're just it just turns black it just and that one i did the other day i got super lucky we didn't have to hit it with any sandpaper at all i was like this was a good day <laughs> like and it was a saturday so you yeah. got really lucky yeah so I, I told the boys to prepare for a long day we were done early it was nice it was just nice to not have to worry yeah. about a long day on a saturday because i i hate asking the guys to work a saturday during the winter but it's like we've had a few slow weeks where it was like guys had a, a motor burn up or guys had alternator go out or something went out it was like all right i'll give the boys off a couple of days during the week give, give them a break from how hard we ran all, all the year and then now now it's like all right well we're gonna have to work one weekend and they're like all right they didn't mind you know but it was nice to have an easy saturday <laughs> the yeah. change would be done by noon and yeah i got a, i got a few guys that they want her truck's done right now with the same thing they want weekends and i'm like this is just a terrible time right now you know holidays and my hunt trips mm -hmm. and we'll get it to them yeah it's just a matter of time yeah and eventually you figure it in and work it in and you'll get used to it on your schedule and you'll, yep you'll kill it all right so i know you're young and early in the game you're only two years in correct yep two years full time yep um, but if you could go two years back to yourself or to another polisher that's just starting off, what is the best piece of advice you could give yourself or somebody else just getting into the game? Um, ask questions and I'm trying to think what's the best way to word it. Like, don't ever feel like you know it all. Cause I mean, I've been doing it five years. I mean, I still learn new stuff every week, whether it's, you know, a step to make things go faster or, you know, just little simple stuff. Like yeah. earlier today, I mean, it was just something so simple that was, I was just not having enough rouge on there. <laughs> yeah. And that's just it. And it's, I mean, it's going to go a long way. Yeah. I tell everybody, I don't think I'm better than anybody else. And I don't think I'm the best. Like I'm 21 years in and I'm still learning new stuff every week. Mm -hmm. Like and, and I'm 25, so that tells you. <laughs> I've been you guys, almost as long as you've been alive. You're still learning stuff. So when people say that, you know, everybody says, you know, this person's the best, that person's the best. It's like you're full of shit. I don't believe it. And you and I had this conversation on the shop that you know, there's certain polishers that tell everybody, "I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best." You can hear me say that. Like, I know a lot of polishers that would knock your socks off that don't even have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. They don't even know what social media is. And that's the problem is the social media people get inside of their heads and make them believe. And social media, you only see the best of everybody's best. Yep. I started posting a couple months ago, like some of my regular work truck stuff. I'm yeah. Like, Here <laughs> you go. Just, this it's, is what yeah. goes out the door 90% yep. of the time. Like it's not just show trucks mm -hmm. here. And I, I need to get back to doing even more of that because I'm still proud of the stuff that's going out the door. Just I want people to understand that like not everything leaves here pit free and yeah. perfect. Like rarely ever do we get to do that stuff. The show truck stuff is just five percent of our business, ten percent at most. You know, it's like I don't know. Just need to keep moving things forward. And if you think you know everything, start selling a book. That's going to make more money selling that book. Everybody thinks polishing is easy. Well, it is. To polish. <laughs> to shine. To, I say to shine. <laughs> to do it at our level, to do it consistently every day, no matter how that truck comes in, is a different story. Yeah. Like, I don't know if the video caught it, but like I said earlier, I went through three guys this year, and one guy quit by lunchtime, and another guy quit after the first day, and the other guy, he got beat up by the grinder, and... 
he was done. It's just like he, holding on to those things. I mean, it tires you out. I've, I've gone through a hundred employees, a hundred in the last 10 years. I mean, I'll have people start, they'll make it two weeks and they're like, yeah, this isn't for me. Mm-hmm. I've had people make it a day and they were like, yeah, this ain't for me. And then I've had people that make it two years and they're just lighting the world on fire. And then all of a sudden one day they come in and they're like, I'm good. I'm going, I'm done. Like, dang it. Like I was really hoping to keep <laughs> yeah. that one. You know, like they were, they were good. They were going to light the world on fire, but this isn't that, just isn't that way all the time. Mm-hmm. But if you think you're the best, seriously, go write a book, sell that book sell a YouTube informational learning channel, do something Mm -hmm. like, because if you're the best, why not give it to everybody else? Why not sell it to everybody else? I don't think anybody's the best yet. No. I've talked to publishers that have been doing this for 35 years. They're still learning stuff. I've taught some guys some little nooks and crannies to help them get faster. They've taught me how to get better as a publisher. Like I've had guys teach me how to be better at business just from their experience. Yeah. Like there's little things that can help you out all the time. And if you think you're the best, you're never going to learn anything because if you already know, yeah, the this is definitely one business that you got, you have to keep a very open mind on. And the industry changes. Yep. Everything's Same fluid. Time. Yep. So like, if you don't, if you don't stay fluid with it, you're going to fall to the wayside. You're going to be just another relic in the industry. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's a good one. I like that. Ask questions. And Justin said that in his too. Just yep. ask questions. I, I really like that. I hope I hope people sit and listen to that because Keenan tells me all the time that he'll talk to somebody at the show and they're like, you know, I wanted to call Evan, but I didn't. I, just, I know he's busy and I was just worried about it. And Keenan's like, well, then call me. Like, I'll help you. That's the thing. Like, last year when I first started, I mean, like you said, I was, you know, just an hour from here and I mean there was times I had questions and I didn't have your number then or anything and I just I messaged your Instagram and yeah it may have been three days later but I still got an answer <laughs> well, Instagram's but, the worst for me yeah. like I don't check it as often as I should but yeah. I'll hop on post something and log back out but yeah I need mean, honestly at some point in time in my near career somebody's listening and wants to apprentice, I need a social media manager. <laughs> like I need somebody posting for me every day and I need somebody getting messages to me, like filtering through some of the stuff I don't need to respond to, but somebody still needs to respond to, like just a, a thank you for supporting that kind of stuff. I still answer all of my YouTube comments. Mm-hmm. Like if you ask me a question in the comments, I respond to it. Like I. I have 150 more to get to that I, I just missed during the holidays. I might have a media guy for you. Really? Yeah. Oh my God, I need somebody so bad. I need somebody that could just come and film. My, fi- it's also the same guy. Film stuff in the <laughs> shop once in a while. Yeah. Like I just need somebody that can handle that. I mean, I'm getting burnt out on that. Like yeah. I got so I got a whole list. Yeah, I'll get you his number for Elia. I mean, Brett, he's... I got a whole list of YouTube videos of yep. things I need to make and that people are asking consistently questions on. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I do it almost every week. I just need somebody here that can come out and film it while I'm doing it. Because it's like, if I have to stop my day and do it, it just doesn't happen sometimes. Yep. Yeah, he, um, I get you his number. He's he's looking at starting his own uh, media company next year full time. So um, Really? He does... He's got all the camera gear, everything. He does it now for some big dental company. Really? Website design, everything. So it'd be kind of cool. Yeah. He's doing the one I do most of my hunting trips with. He does a lot of photography for these outfitters and stuff. Really? So yeah, he's he's good at what he does. I had a I had a kid working in house here for a while and he was getting really good and then he got a really good job offer somewhere else and it was like I couldn't afford to keep him. Yeah. And it sucked because I wish I could have. Mm-hmm. I mean I look at it now like, man, if I could have kept my YouTube channel going even more, like, I don't know, could have really accomplished even more. And honestly, my YouTube channel is still growing consistently, hundreds of new subscribers every month. So I'm going to take it as long as I can get it, but I, I got a whole ton of content that needs to come out, a mm-hmm. whole ton of content that needs to come out. But the best part is the last part. Um, good for me because I get the put you in the hot seat, but you can ask me a question. You know, I, I've been thinking about that since <laughs> you filmed yours with Justin and I still can't come up with a question. I mean, that's good. It's good for me. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, 
usually when I have questions, I just I know you ask it. You hit me up pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like you know we talk you know three or four times a week now, so it's just yeah. like if it's there, I just ask it. Yep, and it, it helps Keenan's in that group too. That yeah, you know, if I miss it, I miss a lot. I I don't pay attention in the group as often as I should, but Keenan Keenan's pretty quick to answer. Yep. Yep. He's, he's been a good addition to my team. Oh, that's a, it's a good group of guys. Yeah. I mean, it's, gets rowdy once yeah. a while. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's, and it's, you know, it's not all just from this state, you know, it's Arkansas, Indiana. Yep. And it's Illinois. all over. So. Yep. No, it's nice. And then Iowa, they don't, they don't talk too much in the group over there, but they're, they're there. It's pretty cool. Yep. So see how this year goes. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see. Are you are you going to Louisville? Yep, Louisville and Wildwood. Are you? Yep. Awesome. Um, I tell you, I ain't driving to Wildwood though. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> if, if my cab over is done, I'm probably going to drive it down there. That'd be a long, miserable ride. Well, it's got air ride on it now, so it'll be better. Better. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Wildwood's a long one. We've all taken the Wildwood trip, like. I'm gonna pay Kenny to drive it down. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, Kenny Cryer. If you actually listen to these, maybe I will ask you to drive it down because it'll be on air right now. So it won't be as bad, but I may pay you to drive it down there, and I'll just fly and meet you there. Yeah, that's what I, I told Adam. I was like, "Yeah, I'll be able to put my stuff in one of your trucks, and I'll catch you on a flight down there." Because well, I ain't driving. You know, last year Don Wood offered to take my pickup down for me, and I'm like, you know, it would be nice, but. Honestly, I only flew in for a couple of days and I just rented a car. Um, I used the app Turo, um, T-U-R-O, and you rent people's actual cars. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, I rented a really nice car for, like, 60 bucks a day. It was, like, an Audi something supercharged mm -hmm. two-seater car. Like, yeah. Super fun. nice, fun to drive. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is going to be good for 60 bucks a day. Yeah. I don't like, that kind of fits on more of a Florida vibe too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like my pickup, it would have been fun to take my pickup down. You know, my pickup's pretty iconic. People talk about yep. it. And it's always nice to have my own pickup too, but at the same time, like that drive is just too long. I know Don would have hauled it down and he went to ask for nothing, but I just don't like doing that to people. Mm -hmm. Yep, nothing. Nothing's the same with having your own. <laughs> That's right. It was it was nice when we took mine down to Joplin. I was just like, you know, I don't have to take anything. And Adam actually had just was in the middle of trading his truck in for a new new one, so we were like, yeah, we'll just take mine. <laughs> yeah, that works out good. Well, cool. I'm glad you guys came through today, and uh, I'm glad we managed to have time to do some podcasting with you guys. Because uh, once again, you guys are part of that group of people that. I care about and that uh, I want to keep seeing do well and um, I want to get as, as many people as I can on this podcast I don't care if it's people that even hate me I, I'd love to still have them on here just because there's a lot of those I, well there's a lot of them <laughs> and I'm alright with that I, I, I've told you this before like everybody can hate me I don't, I don't that doesn't bother me at all I get messages every week from people that are like you know that video really helped me and that's what keeps me going. Not these full-time polishers that hate me mm -hmm. or that hate me for some other ulterior reason. They think some company made me famous and that's what where everything stemmed from. And I don't care if everybody forgets that I've been doing this for 21 years. Like I've been doing it longer than most of these guys that bash on me. I've been polishing longer than they've all been even thinking about polishing. Mm -hmm. So they can hate on me all they want. I'm, most of the time I got strong shoulders. Sometimes <laughs> I let it burn me down a little bit, yeah. but the end sometimes of the day, it came in. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of guys like yourself that you're not trashing. It's it's cool to get a breath of fresh air that there are good people in this industry still. And uh, no, I'm I enjoy it. I hope that uh, I hope that there gets to be more more good people and less animosity. People can start looking at it as a business instead of a uh, an art because the mm -hmm. art is what screws people up i think mm -hmm. definitely well let's see where it goes i'm yep. interested to see where you take it and be the last last episode of uh 2021 love it thanks for stopping by <laughs> been good